I never ever thought I would get a Kelly gun, not in my wildest dreams. Tony Cleaver collects antique Australian cult firearms, and it's his latest acquisition that excites him the most. The fact that this has turned out has made my year. When you're a collector, you don't get any better than that. There's just nothing. And that gun will never leave our family, I'm telling you now. Aye, never, aye, yeah. Tony purchased the 56 calibre 1860 Colt percussion revolving carbine at an auction in Melbourne earlier this year. He was surprised at the fierce bidding war for an old gun with a faulty action and no provenance details. I gave it a value in my head and, well, I did pull out and, uh, and it kept going. <laughs> so I jumped back in and and I thought that these other people that were bidding against me knew something about this gun that I didn't. So I, I kept going till I got it and I paid quite a bit of money for it. The tale of the infamous Kelly Gang's demise at a Glenrowan Inn in 1880 is a part of Australian folklore. Ned, his brother Dan and their associates, Joe Byrne and Steve Hart, barricaded themselves and hostages inside firing their guns at police, who had them surrounded. Ned was the only one to be taken alive. Joe Byrne was shot during the gunfight. Dan Kelly and Steve Hart perished in the fire set by police to flush them out. There's no official record of the guns found that day. Only this photo, which shows a similar Colt revolving carbine owned by Ned Kelly. It was taken by a policeman and given away as a gift. It's now held in a private collection. Anything to do with the Kelly gang is uh, going to fascinate a lot of people in Australia because there's so many myths and so many people say that they have a, even a family connection with the Kelly gang. There's so, so much interest in this country about Ned Kelly and that era of that frontier era in the late 1870s and 1880s. After examining his new purchase with two local gun experts, Tony is confident he's the new owner of the gun that belonged to Steve Hart. I've got to be 80% sure before I claim anything like that. And yes, I'm over 80% now. Aye. One of the reasons for his confidence is the similarity to Kelly's gun in the photo taken after the siege. It's quite possible that uh, someone has souvenired a gun from the, the Battle of Glen Rowan, maybe, maybe a policeman or, or maybe one of the many onlookers there. There were several hundred people at the site at the time watching on from a distance and when the inn was set on fire, a lot of them came in and picked over the, the site for souvenirs. Someone even picked up, picked up a foot that had been uh, burned in the fire. Souvenir hunting was, was definitely very popular then and it is possible that someone did, did make off with it. That could have happened, yet. Yeah. Key to Tony's belief, this unique mark on the stock. Apparently the Kellys wrapped a lady's corset strap uh, around the stock so that they had better manageability of, of the gun shooting it with one hand and uh, they had more friction on it and more control over the gun rather than have a semi-slippery sort of varnish stock in their hand. Under a really strong magnifying glass or a micro lens, you can see it. Mm -hmm. And when you match it up with the end of a corset strap, oh, it fits perfect. <laughs> so, yeah. 7.30 approached independent antique gun experts about Tony's theories. We were given access to photos of Ned Kelly's gun for comparison. They say the binding on Ned's gun is just waxed string, a common way to secure cracks in the wood. The binding would have been a repair. You've got to remember the Kelly gang were fit young men um, in their early 20s and strong. Um, and they'd have no trouble in holding a gun like that and operating it one-handed. Those marks to me, they don't look like old marks to me, like. Those marks there, stoned by sweat and oil. I can't see any evidence that the gun was bound whatsoever. 
you can tell by the coloration there that much lighter than the timber around it or any of the other marks and the older marks probably from the period of use of the gun are much darker a lot of wear and tear there the inn in glen rowan was reduced to flaming rubble tony's gun does have significant heat damage it's definitely been exposed to a fire of some sort not for very long and not, not an intense heat <laughs> Records show little remained after the fire, other than the charred bodies of Steve Hart and Dan Kelly. Although some, including Tony, believe the two bush rangers actually escaped to Queensland, perhaps with Tony's gun. There was no way that someone in that fire could have escaped, so that's been disproved. So I guess it helps a little bit with tourism or a little bit of interest in Australian history to have that sort of mythology out there. As to Tony Cleaver's 1860 Colt revolving carbine and its links to the siege. Well, it's a lovely piece. I'd love to have it myself. As far as the connection to Glen Rowan, at the moment, on the evidence that we've got, I'd say you're really drawing a, a long bow. I haven't seen any evidence that would convince me that that gun was used by the gang. A view that doesn't phase this Colt collector. It doesn't matter, people got the right to believe what they want to believe, you know. I believe what I believe, eh, because I've investigated it, eh. They go and do the same investigation, eh, and, and let's see what they say, eh. It's just interesting what research will, will throw up. So you can always keep looking, you know, you never give up on these things. I guess it's a, a little bit like the great treasure hunt of, uh, of Australian history to find something that was really part of the Kelly gang.